Okay, here we are out on um, University Forest property. Today, uh, in the midst of a horrible uh, swarm of mosquitoes on a, with an impending rainstorm, we're on a mission to dig up some advanced regeneration of, guess what? Uh, Quercus macrocarpa, fir oak, um, a native uh, oak to Maine uh, in the white oak group grows in the, these uh, floodplain forests. If you look around here, pan around, um, you'll see we're on the, uh, actually in the riparian zone of the of Pushaw Stream on the University Forest property in West Old Town. And it's a fairly uncommon stand of bur oak uh, that we scouted last fall and found uh, that there was, yes, advanced regeneration of oaks. We were actually looking for acorns to not find any in the crop, but we did find seedlings. So we're now come back, it's mid-June, and we're going to dig a few of these up and then do uh, a restoration planting on the Orono Town property where we killed knotweed last year. This is a, a really nice example. This should this tree should grow, right? We got a good, nice fibrous root system here. This oak seedling is probably one, two, three, five or six or more years old. It's hard to say. Uh, white oaks are preferred deer browse. Um, so we're going to try to get a bucket full of these, as many as we can find. This is a perfect size because it should transplant fairly readily. we got a nice uh, root system there. It's hard to find. I could not find a source of uh, bur oak seedlings. I guess there probably are some, but bur oak, of course, is a species that grows. It kind of has a disjunct range. It's an odd thing. It grows in these riparian habitats here in northern New England over into Nova Scotia and then you find it in the in its western part of its range it's on the prairies it's a fire adapted species and growing in savanna like conditions so those conditions could not be more different but why that's true I guess we don't know the, the leaves don't even look like bur oak they bur oak of course macrocarpa means it has these great big sinuses in the middle of the leaves this looks more like a uh, swamp white oak to me except for it doesn't have the white background, Quercus bicolor. So anyway, here we are. Uh, we'll uh, get a few of these and then we'll maybe we'll find a native stand of the burrow so you can see it. There's some in the background in the beaver floyds, but they're all dead probably from flooding. Um, so stay tuned. Okay, we're scouting here for seedlings and we've run across this really nice tall uh, sapling really in the understory of this uh, declining red maple swampy stand and you can see more of the leaf shape and the, that's characteristic of this bur oak. There's a better example with the big deep sinuses in the middle of the lobes. So apparently these small seedlings we're digging up don't really exhibit this uh, characteristic yet. But, so we're on the uh, search for the apparent standard. Okay, mosquitoes are not letting up any. thought we'd illustrate actually how we're digging these. We're looking for seedlings that are maybe a foot tall, six inches to a foot. Uh, oaks, of course, tap-rooted species, so we try to get way down underneath the root system without taking too much of a, breaking off too much. We've broken off a few. We've got some fibrous roots. So we're digging around with our tree planting shovel down as far as we can, looking around like this and trying to gently detach these roots from all the other roots and everything else that's in the soil. We don't want to take great big balls. If we would normally be doing this, this is not the best time to do this when the trees have leafed out. <coughs> we should be doing this sooner, but we didn't, so. Well, we needed Here to we see are. the leaves in order to so ID it. We're, we're trying to lift this out. I'm trying to get underneath it with my hands and, and lift the whole root mass out and then kind of detach a lot of this extra material from the fibrous root system, and let's see how we did. Well, not bad, so that that actually should grow, right? That's, um, we may have broken off a little bit of the tap root, but if uh, that tree is watered and you can see, look at this, you can still see the acorn there. Right now that's probably not the same acorn because this is probably a four or five year old seedling. We're in a stand here of uh, more of a mature bur oak, but that one we'll give a try, we'll see. Here's an area at Brownie's Landing 
where you can see the brown stalks from what we did last year. We did have some uh, of the Japanese knotweed sprout up again, and you can see those are the dark green leaves. I've gone through and hand pulled them because there's enough of them that we can just use a manual method. I'll scan over, you can see a part where I have not yet made it. And you can see just how quickly the bamboo comes back and is almost as tall as I am. So luckily with the way that the stalks are, you can quickly break the stalk. And right now the soil is enough that for a lot of them, I'm able to just pull them out by the roots and leave them at the surface, hopefully to dry and die. Okay, here we are a couple hours later um, on the planting site. This is a place in uh, downtown Orno. You can see the Stillwater River in the background. It's called Brownies Park. Uh, heavily used by recreationists, but it's just a jungle of a mess of vegetation. Last year we uh, eradicated mostly the knotweed. You can see the dead stubs all over the place. We did the treatment where we cut the knotweed twice and then sprayed it late. There's, you can see some stragglers sprouting back, but take care of them easily by hand pulling and maybe one more herbicide. But we're here, um, the rule is, of course, you can't just kill vegetation, you have to replace it with something more useful. So earlier we were out um, collecting burr oak seedlings, and we got a nice little population of about a dozen or so here, and I'm going to pick one out and we're going to plant it right here in this hole. Let's try this one right here. the roots good. better than any herbicide or any kind of site prep. This is just lights out for vegetation within two feet of the seedling. So this is, and this will last for years down here. So we got the corners, now we do the midpoints. So that's good for competition control. And now finally, we have our five foot tubex tree tubes that we're gonna put around us to keep the deer and other herbivores from browsing on this little bugger. So I'm positioning it here. Tubes are actually not new. We've reused these from another oak planting project. I'm putting in the stake. And 
Normally, if you were starting from scratch, you would then zip tie the tube to the stake, but that's already fastened from the previous work. So that's not completely plumb, but that's probably okay. The tree, the main thing is this tree will now have a perfect environment. Light will come in. Um, it will be CO2 uh, carbon dioxide enriched, and it uh, will be protected. So uh, that tree should be good to go.